So it's not every day I find myself on 3 Plus U in hospital scrubs, but today is going to be a good day because if you're watching this morning and you're one of the many outdoor enthusiasts here in Chattanooga, a runner, maybe you play soccer, whatever it may be, as you get older, a lot of us find ourselves having some knee problems. If you've been afraid that a total knee replacement was the only option that you had, this morning, we're going to set the record straight. Dr. Marty Reddish, who is with Park Ridge Bone and Joint, kindly invited me into uh, at the OR this morning. Good to see you. Yeah, it's great to be here. So Glad you're, you can, you're looking good with the scrub hat and everything. <laughs> I don't have to worry about tangles today. That's right. So you're going to give us a bit of an anatomy lesson. Right. And then you're going to really walk us through what this is. But what we're talking about is not total knee replacement, but you're calling it minimally invasive partial knee. Minimally invasive partial knee resurfacing. Not a new <clears throat> procedure. It's not a new procedure. It's been around as long as total knee replacement. But it's never really as, gotten as popular with orthopedic surgeons because it's more difficult to do. It it's, was traditionally difficult to revise to something else. Mm -hmm. So the surgeons just said, if there's anything wrong with your knee as far as arthritic, total knee is the only operation. Whereas minimally partial, partial knees are done by just certain orthopedic surgeons who really uh, have learned how to do it and we're all very enthusiastic. About okay, it. so before we get into the anatomy lesson, I would argue, and I bet you would agree, that it's kind of human nature to think, well, if I'm going to do it, let me just do it the one time and avoid multiple surgeries. So maybe at the surface, do people not realize that minimally invasive is not a way to prolong the inevitable, but it's because you might not need the full knee replacement? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> In fact, uh, the majority of our patients will never have to have a total knee replacement. And, but if they do, it's very easy to do a primary first time total knee replacement after this particular procedure. Okay, let's do the anatomy part of it because okay. a picture's worth a thousand words, mm -hmm. right? So what are we looking right, at to here? To understand what a partial knee is all about, one is the patellofemoral joint, which is your kneecap gliding up and down. It's not as important as the other com compartments. The other compartments, as you see on this x-ray of a patient, uh, are the two weight-bearing compartments of the knee. Now you see right here, this is where your ACL and your PCL live. Okay. Uh, and you may have heard of ACLs when you talk about it. athletes, they tear their, tear their ACL, they're out of commission for a year, they have it reconstructed. That's where it sits. So we have the medial and the lateral compartments. And the majority of time when you wear your knee out, bone against bone, your cartilage is gone on just one side of the knee. And this is a typical x-ray of somebody who's a good candidate for a partial knee. Okay. Yet so often, surgeons in America will do a total knee replacement on this thing. So here we have this side of the knee. This is the medial side? This is the lateral side. Okay, and that's healthy. Perfectly healthy. You see that nice wide space between the bones? That's cartilage. Right. On an x-ray. Here, this is what people call bone against bone. The cartilage is all worn out. That in. painful part. And that's where they hurt. And a partial knee, we just resurface with a small incision, leave this ligaments alone, leave all your quadriceps muscle and the important muscles alone, mm -hmm. and just sneak in here and use some dental type techniques and resurface that one side. Okay, so now, now you've seen what lies inside of your knee. We're gonna walk over and you've got a patient here with you today and we'll show what really happens when you go to mark on a person's body for the total knee versus the minimally invasive part. That's right, we'll show you the difference in the incisions. Okay, so we just had a chance to see what the inside of our knees look like on x-ray. Now the point of showing what the difference is, Dr. Reddish, between getting the total knee versus the partial knee in terms of the incision size. This is a vast difference. Yes, it's, it, the skin incision is a lot different and the muscle incision is different. So when we're looking at a total knee incision, it goes from up into the quadriceps all the way down to where it attaches the tibial tubercle. And that's the typical length of the incision. We have to cut that much because we have to cut through the quadriceps muscle all the way around the kneecap, take the kneecap, flip it upside down, dislocate it out of the way so the end of the bone sticks out where we can work on it. Whereas with a partial knee, we're going to the bad side of the knee, making an incision as you see right here. We don't cut through any muscle. We don't flip the kneecap over. Just work through a small window uh, to do the work with 
uh, smaller instruments. I guess I'm stating the obvious here, but I'll let you do it more eloquently. This has got to create a difference in recovery time. Oh yes, it's, 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 it's really surprising to me how quickly partial knees can uh, get over this. They have pain certainly for a few days uh, uh, after a partial knee uh, that where they'll need some medication, uh, but they don't have to do formal physical therapy uh, because we haven't scarred up the muscle up here and we haven't removed the ligaments that help stabilize the knee, the ACL and the PCL. Uh, so the recovery is much easier. So we had talked earlier about the outdoorsy nature of Chattanooga. For people who are these avid exercisers, this can be the difference in them continuing to love their sport and not. Well, certainly their, their muscle's not scarred and their ACL is not gone like it is with a total knee replacement. Total knee replacement changes the gait a little bit. That's been measured in laboratories, uh, whereas partial knees does not. They have a natural gait. So patients typically report a more natural feeling to a partial knee, and they, they forget that they've had a joint replacement, a lot more with a partial than a total. Okay, you did not bring us into the OR just to talk and see x-rays and her knee. You're going to bring out the equipment that you use in doing these minimally invasive procedures. When we come back, he'll get to the operating table and show us really what this is all about. Are you ready? I'm ready if you are. <laughs> We're back after this. Welcome back to the show. If you are just tuning in, we're getting a, an anatomy lesson and a, an orthopedic lesson on the show this morning. Dr. Marty Reddish and his team have been kindly walking us through what it involves to do a minimally invasive uh, partial knee replacement. So Dr. Reddish, we've gone through the x-rays, we've gone through the markings of the patient's knee. Now we're getting into really what you do. You're going to begin with a total knee? Yeah, we're going example. to begin with a total knee replacement. Uh, uh, this is just on a saw bone, something we use to learn how to do these procedures that shows the bone work here. Uh, after we've made that big incision, we can see the bones coming out and we can do this work. Uh, so the first thing we do with a total knee is we drill a hole up the shaft of the uh, marrow canal of the bone and put an alignment rod in here. Then we're going to cut off the end of the bone. We're going to pin this down. We're going to take the rod out and make a cut. Go ahead, Chad. And uh, then we're going to saw off through it. Uh, see, I'm putting this saw blade through a slot and sawing off the end of the bone. Okay, then we take this off and then we're ready to put this device on to make the rest of the cuts. And again, take a saw blade and shape the end of the bone. getting dust everywhere. And then we'll make a couple other cuts. And one more. Drive us at home. Then we take this off and we've basically milled out a geometric shape out of the end of the patient's femur right here. Then we'll cut off the top of the bone. We typically use a guide to do this. I'm just going to do this freehand. So we cut the whole top of the bone off. And the, the ACL sits right in here. So by removing this, 
Uh, we're removing the ACL. There is none anymore. Okay. Then we put the implants in. All right, now we have a template on where we've cut the lower bone, the tibia, and we're going to drive a spike down in there. Just the implant, go ahead. The implant has got to go in there. And, all right. Then we put the implant in place. It's got a long spike to anchor it. And see if he can knock that in there. Okay. And then we put the upper uh, where we've made these cuts. Lots of hammering here. And then we put a piece of plastic in between these two metal devices. And there you have the total knee replacement. Now, in a real person, the kneecap is upside down during this whole period of time. We saw off the bottom of it, put a little plastic button on it. Then we take everything and pull it back around and stitch it back up. Okay, the only one word to be said, and that is, wow. We had a gallery in here a bit. There are a lot of people watching this afternoon, Dr. Reddish, and everyone who was non-medical had their mouths wide open. That's an invasive procedure. I, I hear people describe it as brutal That's when they correct. see it for the first time. Uh, but, but it's a very effective operation. I do lots of them, and, and if the entire knee joint's worn out, it's a good operation, but yes, it's a major thing and it looks pretty brutal. Okay, I think that's good to point out that you do understand the value of a total knee oh, replacement. Oh, absolutely, yeah, you I do, do lots of total. But now we're gonna get to the real reason we're here and that is this minimally invasive. So you've seen invasive, now let's see minimally so. Right, so we've made the small incision here and the saw is only used for the very first part of this operation. I just take a little bit of bone out. That come out. That's the only time the saw is used for this opera, for the partial knee. Then uh, Chad's gonna hold this leg over here, kinda hold it just like that, Chad. And then the rest is done with dental instruments type instruments. It's actually devised and invented by a dentist who became an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, and so we're just actually using this burr to fashion an inlay into the bone in a very simple semicircular shape. Into which we'll put a piece of plastic. So it gets its stability because it's sunken down, it's inlaid into the bone. But it's a freehand bone sculpting job here. And after doing 2,500 of these, not too difficult. All right, and then we'll take little trial components, see if they'll fit in there. And that fits in there pretty decently, okay? Then for the upper bone, and we can take this out, we'll straighten the knee out and see how far this uh, has to come, the upper component. And we can take that plastic piece out, Chad. And then we work on the upper bone. And again, we're just going down a couple millimeters. I'm gonna bend that down, Chad, so I get the bottom. Now here I have to make a rounded place for the implant. 
So we're sculpting just a rounded area here that the implant will fit into. Then we'll take a little guide and make a hole. And then a little saw to make a notch. And we'll see if this will go in here now. And then we'll just knock this in place. Put the plastic piece in. Got that, Chad? See, so here is what the partial knee is like. These are cemented in place so they'll stay. And that's our same materials, chrome cobalt metal alloy and high density polyethylene, very expensive piece of durable plastic. And we've resurfaced the bad side of the knee and all the rest of the knee is natural. The ligaments are still here. All the rest of the knee which is healthy is still just like it was. There's nothing better than mother nature and we're leaving it intact. So now here we sit, Dr. Reddish, we've got a total knee here, the minimally invasive partial knee here. Uh, clear to see that especially as you get older, this minimally invasive procedure is the way to go. Uh, this is really terrific in that older age group, over 75. These people almost surely will never have to have a total knee replacement. They don't want to spend the, rem the remainder of their life, or three to six months of the remainder of their life getting over a dangerous and uh, operation with a long recovery, this is really ideal for that older you, age group. You also were telling me that even though the procedure is not new, in the last year there has been uh, some new information learned, you can do this on the other side, this, should the need arise. Yeah, this is a, these are more popular in Europe, uh, and a convention in Europe I realize is very commonplace that if, if the other side of the knee goes bad, which happens infrequently, but it does happen every once so I've, it's about three or four percent of our patients where the other side will go bad, we can just do a partial knee on the other side, a minimally invasive partial knee on the other side, and the patient will never have to have a total knee replacement, even in that rare instance. But as you pointed out, in doing that, the ACL. Still got still your ACLs, and you still, your quadriceps has still not been violated. Okay, I want to make sure that this was not lost on the audience. You have done 2,500 of these procedures? Uh, approximately 2,500 over 18 years, um, and we have a 95% success rate. We're proud to have published in the peer-reviewed literature a, a review 10 to 13 years after surgery. 95% of the implants are still in there. And anyone who has ever uh, undergone any type of surgery has been uh, given the wise advice to make sure you go to somebody who's done the, the procedure quite often, and right. you have. And it, it, it'd be my goal to train a lot more orthopedic surgeons to do this. I, I believe in it that much. So you also believe in getting directly to your patients, therefore there is no need to have a referral. People can just call your office. Right. And here's where you'll find him at Parkridge Bone and Joint, which is right here on the Diagnostic Center side uh, of Parkridge Hospital on Macaulay Avenue, 493. 5220 is the phone number. You can find more information online at parkridgeboneandjoint.com. Uh, and I'll think the best advice is protect what you got.